what's up everyone officially back from london me and mario are excited we're gonna get a training session in today um a couple questions i got to answer you guys have been asking uh some of you follow me on instagram i'm sure some of you probably don't so you haven't seen kind of what's going on london went south i landed in london i started getting some gi issues early in the week uh you know as an athlete you just try not to stress you do your thing i figured we'll pull it in as good as we can come show day so leading into the show, I felt decent, felt okay. I knew the look was gonna be a little worse than RGV because it was kind of like almost food poisoning-esque. Lots of GI distension and things like that. But we don't make excuses. I was in London, my friend was in London. We were both gonna compete, so we did the damn thing. I think I ended up in 13th place there. Uh, the look was probably five, 10% worse than RGV just because of what happened. I couldn't pull my stomach in. I hadn't pooped in like 36 hours. It was insane. Um, so anytime you're that lean, you are very immunocompromised and the littlest shit can set you off. All that travel, eating food I wasn't used to, and then I got this damn cream of rice supplement that I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just cream of rice, and it fucked me up. I'm gonna blast that brand when I figure out what the name is, because it's been notorious for messing people's GIs up. That sucked, it happened, but Good news for you guys, you're getting more prep content because we're not going out like that. Next weekend, Carol's gonna do our, uh, Reno. She's gonna do the Legion show. I'm gonna go out there, support her. I might do it, we'll see. I have three days to the side, four days to the side. We're gonna see how I look um, probably Saturday and I'll make a decision. If I look how I looked the day before I left for the UK, I'll for sure do the show because I was on point. We're doing great. Things are awesome. Sister got into town last night. Nieces are in town. My mom's in town. Family's all around. I feel great. We're just gonna be dieting hard, training hard, and uh, getting you guys more content because honestly, the insanely positive comments and feedback me and Mario are getting on this channel is like nothing I've seen. You get channels that blow up and there's always some negativity. I feel like me and Mario have just kind of gotten amazing feedback. Mario's filming, Mario, whenever he upgrades the color grading, whenever he f figures out new intros, like you guys are loving this shit, we're loving the feedback. It's making us better at what we do. So we're gonna keep going. Prep content, not prep content, we're gonna keep pumping out videos all year. It's gonna be fun. You guys, please let me know you wanna see. I recorded a bunch of stuff in London with the uh, gimbal, the uh, Osmo Pocket. Uh, I'm still getting used to it, so I, I doubt Mario could use any of the footage. It's kind of weird, the tracking's off. But I'll figure it out and we'll get some vloggy type of shit going, some full day eating and things like that that you guys wanna see. But we're gonna get to the session because Mario's got his family in town too. We gotta go show our families around and uh, have a good day. It's early morning training. Let's get this back session in, in, in and done with. Small variations to the message cycle. We're gonna do lat prayers. I was doing lat pullovers and that one day you guys saw, I substituted with lat prayers at barbell, strip barbell. Uh, I like the lat prayer, so we're gonna sub in lat prayer for the lat pullover, and then I'm putting in more compound stuff. I'm imparting some novelty, whether I do Reno or not, there's another show in five weeks. So this is, I'm treating it as a new mesocycle. Reno or not, I'm creating new variations, creating some novel stimulus. It's gonna help us hold on to that lean tissue a little bit better. And uh, I'm gonna do some bent rowing today. I'll make sure that I do the lat purse first, the lesser compound variation of the row, which is gonna be a flexion barbell row uh, before my bent row. So I'm doing flexion rows and bent rows today because I really like the way they make my lower back feel. And uh, they're just an amazing stimulus for me. I've always done bent rows. I keep them in through prep. We're gonna go back to that and uh, keep doing them. So without further ado, let's get started. Me and Mario gotta get this shit done. Oof. 
Ooh, that was good. Remember, you're trying to stay completely parallel. Before you ri rise, you want that to bar to come down some by initiating at the lats, keeping the elbows this direction. Pushing a lot into the palms, your thumbs, because that'll initiate the elbows turning out. So before the body rises, it's not this, it's this. So next set, watch what I'm doing. Make sure, I'm trying to mimic that technique. So I did one set before Mario got here. I have two programs today. Are you gonna do another one or is that good for you? I'll do one more. So Mario's gonna do one more. Just so we have more footage for the lat pair, I'll record him doing it. His technique's already flawless, but I'll try to instruct a little bit if I can. Uh, just so you guys get some tips out of it. But Mario's gonna hit up one more and then we're gonna go do the flexion bent row. Help you keep those elbows high, beautiful. Full fucking stretch. Yep, nice and parallel to the ground. Let me say the lats first. Don't let your body rise yet. Lats first. Yes. Push your body forward. Lats now. Yeah, Mario. Good. Body forward. Toward the ground. Toward the ground. Lats. Elbows high. Lats. Yes. Start moving the body up at when it passes your head. Lats. Lats. Lats now. Yes, Mario. Perfect. The yeah, stretch. Good. The barbell flexion row. This is a very difficult movement. You're creating a bunch of kyphosis in that T-spine on purpose. So the loads are not nearly as heavy as a regular bent row, and you don't use the big plates. The shorter you are, the, the smaller plates you want to use. So if you're like a 410 female, put a couple tens on. Don't use 45s, don't use 25s. I'm going to put these 25s on. That's going to be the heaviest plate that I put on because we got to keep it to where I can actually do that flexion and be here. Because if I have 45s, I'm already touching. I got to get here and create that. I'll take this off at some point so you guys can see what my T-spine's doing. So we're gonna start with 95. You guys can see the technique. I'll get my handy dandy versus. Shitty part about all the like dehydration and everything, travel. You're watery for like days. And it masks your physique, which is partially also what happened when I got there. You're a lot leaner than you look which still kind of coming down from it. So Mario asks, so what, are, what is the rep range? Because this is more of a compound exercise because I've had conversations with Mario because he uses the app where he's like, you know, what are the averages? And I'm like, if it's a very heavy compound, that seven to 15 range is fine. Seven to 10 range. If it's something that's a little more machine based, that 10 to 20 range, depending on the machine, 10 to 15 for a lot of them. Isolation, also like 10 to 30 is probably smart. So these are just averages that I like to use. This is a modified compound exercise where you're intentionally making it a lot harder. You can stick to that seven to 15 range. I like to err on the higher side of that when I'm doing something of that nature. If this were a regular bent row, I'd probably stick to the seven to 10. Because it's a, a bent row variation that's making it difficult on purpose by modifying the technique, the leverages and things like that, you can stay in these positions a little longer because the load's not limiting your erectors or anything like that. You're intentionally training them. So I stick to that 10 to 15-ish for this specific exercise. Same thing with something like, let's see, super uh, elevated heel barbell back squats with like a pause. You could probably do 10 to 15 with that. If it was a regular barbell back squat, ass to grass, just kind of like flowing through the movement, seven to 10 might be more appropriate. 
So that's kind of how I would like to treat this. But anywhere from seven to 15, no wrong answers. Just try not to load it up so much that you're heaving and hoeing. That's not the point of this exercise. Save that for the bent rows. So that are a little heavier will probably be my working load for this, this specific exercise. We're nice and warmed up. Just gonna go into the movement. Aiming for that 10 to 15 range, couple in the tank, two sets of these. And then I have bent rows, regular bent rows programmed, but we'll see. I did that on purpose because doing those two movements prior to bent rows will limit the load. And because I'm so deep into contest prep and I'm doing another couple of weeks of dieting, it's gonna be like 20 something at this point. I don't wanna use the loads I can typically use on purpose. People get so caught up with like, you gotta be using the same weight all prep. It's completely wrong, it's ass backwards. You're not going to be for a bunch of variety of reasons. From as simple as your leverage is changing, all the way down to proteins unraveling inside of specific fiber types, changing the fiber type characteristics a little bit to where you can't produce more force or the amount of force you could. Uh, there's all kinds of shit going on. So getting the client mindset away from load has to be the same to like pre-exhausting type of stuff, machine-based stuff, making it to where they're having fun with their training still and not so focused on numbers um, to keep them away from that, their mind away from that shit. So I'm intentionally doing that for the bent row. I'll probably bent row, but we'll see. So let's say typically 275 is working sets, 275, 315. I might get up to 225 for sets of seven to 10 after doing these two exercises. So we'll see. I want to do them. I'm feeling good. Hamstrings are good. Um, that's one of my problem areas where I got to worry about how much uh, volume's going there. And this clearly, you're in a, a partially contracted state and holding an isometric contraction as you're bent over. So we got to be safe. So far, so good. Probably going to do bent rows after this, but let's get into the set. Good set. Erectors all the way up to traps, rear delts, rhomboids. This is a full back exercise. All that row for the last bullshit, get the fuck out of my face with it. Uh, this is for the back. We're modifying it to hit the whole back. So let's do that. So, Mario's a smart cookie. So we added those plates. What I was telling you guys, the shorter you are, the less plates you'll have to use or just the bigger a deficit you gotta stand on. You can also grab wider on the bar. That's another variation. Another way to get that nice deep stretch to make sure they're doing this properly. So notice the slight kyphosis and the T-spine with the lower back still nice and tight, slightly reaching forward, huge range of motion. These are fucking flawless. How you doing? You're looking in shape. Trying to catch it How much weight are you down? Man. Down to 210 finally. You look man. good, man. You look good. You got Thank a you. show coming up? Or? Uh, I just competed in London. You I did. Before That's that, I competed at uh, RGV in Texas. I got fifth there. Fifth there. Got to London, got a little sick. Ended up in like 13th. So 
I'm not gonna end my so go I'm not gonna end border, my season. Border to England. Right, exactly. So to create that more flexion, I'm almost grabbing a little wider and reaching forward. A little different than a bent row where it's kind of like straight up and down of a bar path, but that cooks my erectors and my rhomboids. I'm pumped to shit. We're gonna add in some weight and do a set of bent rows, just one set today, because it's week one. I might add 50 to 90 pounds, we'll see. But we'll let Mario go first. So this will be 215. This should be a decent workload for like six to 10 rep range for that regular bent row. We'll see, probably one set. Really forcing yourself to maintain the proper posture, especially now because your entire back is taxed. It's gonna force you to use those muscles even more and give you an even better stimulus. As long as you're able to use the back this is a fine way to do some kind of pre-exhaust. If all this does is fuck you up to where your technique feels like garbage and you can't maintain posture, don't do this. Don't do the pre-exhaust shit. Or just find another way to do it. Do bent rows first, like I normally would in a mass, and then flexion rows at the end. Again, modifying specific things in certain ways on purpose during specific times, levers changing, those other things I talked about. That's the key to programming. Good weight. Nine with like three in the tank. We can progress from there. Even if the diet is starting to hit pretty hard. I think that was a good starting load. So as mentioned, family's in town. I have two bicep and a lateral delt uh, as far as the rest of this session goes. I'm gonna split it A and PM. My mom and my brother wanna do some stuff at the, at the house that I, that I got. I have a little gym in there. Nothing fancy, like dumbbells and stuff. So I'm gonna train with them at the house <laughs> and finish up over there. Uh, just modify some stuff, it's no big deal. Um, so that's it for the back stuff. We had two sets of lat prayers, two sets of the uh, flexion row and a set of bent rows, five total sets. I'll have another five to six sets of vertical stuff later in the week, 11 total sets to start the meso. Great stimulus. Um, keeping that two to four times per week frequency, depending on the muscle. And uh, that's it, guys. Let me know you want to see, like, comment, share all that good stuff. Me and Mario are back at it. Like I said, shows coming up, potentially Reno. If not, this might already be in there. If not, Texas Pro. So we're going to get in shape and shape. And I'm very excited. Uh, guys, as always, thank you. See you next time.